Hello everyone, this is Brian Ross from Grace Life Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We want to welcome you to this video. This is our second video in our response to Truth Time Radio. So if you at this point haven't watched the previous one on the History Teacher Barks Back, I recommend that you go and watch that video first <clears throat> before moving on to this one here that I am recording right now. I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel, Grace Life Bible Church on YouTube. If you would consider subscribing and ringing the alarm bell here as a way of staying current with the ministry, both when we go live from the assembly building on Sunday morning, as well as when we create content here midweek, we would certainly appreciate that. Our featured book for the time being is, again, my book from this generation forever, Volume 1, Inspiration, A Study of God's Promise to Preserve His Word. This is a 340-page book. This is the first 27 lessons of my adult Sunday school class on this topic from this generation forever. So if you haven't picked that up and are interested in this topic, I would I would consider doing that. If I were you, we would appreciate any support that you could uh, throw our way by those means. <clears throat> also want to remind you about our Rumble channel here, Grace Life Bible Church on Rumble. We established this in uh, 2001, 2021, excuse me, as an alt tech site to YouTube. Should something happen to our YouTube ministry, if you are into alt tech sites or would just like an alternative to YouTube, if you would consider uh, subscribing and joining us here, we would appreciate that as well. So this is the second video that I am making responding to True Time Radio. In the first video, the previous one that I mentioned earlier, we were responding to this blog from April 8, The History Teacher Barks Back. Now, I'm not going to reiterate everything I said. We need to move on in this uh, series and through this content. So I want to go to where we left off at the end of <clears throat> the last video. And that was right here on page four. This statement right here by Truth Time Radio. Not that of an extra biblical, not that of the extra biblical research of a quote history teacher, and certainly not that of a quote born again Calvinist who published a partially plagiarized dictionary in 1828. More on that subject in the near future. So let's go to the comment here in the left margin. True Time Radio foreshadows the release of a follow-up blog post to this one. So the, this one being the one right here on the screen from April 8th, the history teacher barks back. On the topic of Noah Webster in the quote near future, the promised blog, po blog post, excuse me, on Webster, titled Noah Webster, the Calvinist King James Bible Corrector, was originally released on Friday, April 22nd. The history of True Time Radio's blog post on Webster is curious, to say the least. And that is what I want to talk about in this video. Let's be clear, though, before we move on. In this blog, the history teacher barks back in this blog article that is clearly about me, True Time Radio foreshadows the coming a forthcoming release on the subject matter of Noah Webster. If we go to the Truth Time Radio um, page, website, as of right now, we can see that here is an article on Noah Webster, the Calvinist King James Bible Corrector, that is dated April 20. So this is the forthcoming article on Noah Webster that was foreshadowed in the article from April 8. All right, now... We are going to talk about this article right here because there are serious and significant problems with Noah Webster, with the Noah Webster article by True Time Radio. In this video, we are going to talk about the fact, and I'm just going to cut to the chase, that this blog is plagiarized, massively plagiarized. Okay. And number two, we're going to deal with in the next video after this one, we're going to deal with the uh, argumentation utilized by True Time Radio in this blog article on Noah Webster. So regarding plagiarism, let's look at my annotated copy of the Noah Webster, the King James Calvinist. And the first thing I want to point out, I just showed you right here that April 20 is the date, but we have to note a discrepancy. This is the way here that this appears on the blog right now, dated April 20, but the original blog was written and posted on April 22nd. So this blog post on Noah Webster from April 22nd is True Time Radio's promised follow-up to their blog, The History Teacher Barks Back from April 8th. That was the one I was just showing you, okay? In that, they stated, quote, not that of an extra, 
of the extra biblical research of a history teacher and certainly not that of a born again Calvinist who who published a partially plagiarized dictionary in 1828. More on that in the near future. Two key points should be noted here. First, this blog post, this one here about Webster, does not even address the subject matter of Webster's alleged plagiarism. Second, most of, and most importantly, True Time Radio has the audacity to accuse Webster of plagiarism and then write a follow-up blog post that is laden with blatant plagiarism as uh, the rest of the document comments below prove beyond doubt. Simply stated, True Time Radio knows what plagiarism is and condemns it as wrong while engaging in a massive case of it. And then they talk here about manipulation technique. And, and uh, again, this first paragraph is, is uh, about me. One wonders if Truth Time Radio views stealing others' intellectual labor and passing it off as their own as, quote, hypocrisy and lies, like they talk about here. 2 Corinthians 8.21, proving for things honest, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of all men. So we need to get right into the proving that this is, in fact, plagiarism. So the below highlighted yellow portions of the text in True Time Radio's article, unless noted otherwise, are copied directly from Jess McHugh's article titled The Nationalist Roots of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, dated March 30, 2018. Now that is this article right here. This article right here for the Paris Review, The Nationalist Roots of Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, Jess McHugh, March 30, 2018. So, True Time Radio passes McHugh's work off as its own by failing to properly acknowledge the true author. The quotations below in the right margin from McHugh's 2018 work for the Paris Review. The quotes are positioned next to the corresponding language in True Time Radio's article so as to clearly demonstrate the level of plagiarism that Truth Time Radio has engaged in. So again, they have copy-pasted, literally copy-pasted, and manipulated the text of McHugh's article into their blog, all right? So anything here that is highlighted in yellow, there is corresponding language in quotes in the right margin that shows and demonstrates the level of um, plagiarism that Truth Time Radio has engaged here. All of this stuff is copied from Jess McHugh. And you will notice there are no quotation marks. There is no source citation. There is no attribution. These things in the original blog post from April 22nd are passed off as the work of Truth Time Radio without any attribution of any kind. All right. And it is extensive. So all the stuff in yellow corresponds with the things here in the margin showing the level of plagiarism that Truth Time Radio has engaged in here. All right. Now, as far as McHugh goes, there are nine paragraphs. These nine paragraphs that are highlighted in yellow, there are nine paragraphs from McHugh that are in the Webster blog here by Truth Time Radio that are copied directly from uh, Jess McHugh's article for the Paris Review. Nine paragraphs as we demonstrate right here. Now, I'm not going to read all this content to you. You can read this for yourself in by clicking on the link in the description to the document I have here on the screen, and you can see for yourself what is going on here. It is very obvious and apparent. <clears throat> now, there is more. I'm going to deal with uh, some of these other issues here. I would just point out, uh, it would be nice to know what the source is for these two paragraphs right here. It would be nice to know what the source is for both of these quotations highlighted in orange. There's no citation given there either. But then, folks, if you come down here and we come now to this paragraph, the highlighted text on the left is copied verbatim without citation from C. Doddell's 2006 piece, Correcting the Grammar of God, Noel Webster's 1833 Bible from the following website. So here is the second source that Truth Time Radio has elected to plagiarize, and that is this article, copyrighted article by C. Doddell on, from 2006. So now we have three paragraphs of plagiarism that are occurring from Daudel. Uh, so there are not there are twelve total plagiarized paragraphs in this article. Now, if you go to page uh, six with me here, I believe no page five. The highlighted text at the left in the first paragraph on this page is once again copied verbatim from Daudel's two thousand six work without citation. 
first consider the text as it appears in Dawdell's work. So here is the paragraph from, from Dawdell. Anything in bold represents things that Truth Time Radio has stripped out. So notice, Truth Time Radio has manipulated Dawdell's work and passed it off as their own. Dawdell, using proper MLA-style citations, has noted his sources for the statements that he is making. And you can see here that Truth Time Radio has intentionally removed all of the documentable information that Dawdell originally had while lifting, literally copy-pasting Dawdell's work into their blog and passing it off as their own. So that's what I note here. Second note, the bolded portions of the above text from Dawdell. Truth Time Radio has intentionally removed the parenthetical source citations from Dawdell's work. This is clear manipulation of a source by True Time Radio, <clears throat> it, uh, which they failed to cite. And then we can see the same thing here. This paragraph right here in yellow. The text at left is lifted from Dawdell's piece with only slight revision. The bolded words in the following quote indicate places where True Time Radio has changed the wording in their blog post. And we can see right here that they have, again, stripped out the source citations used by Dawdell and, and manipulated his work and passed it off as their own. Once again, Truth Time Radio intentionally removed the source citations of Dawdell while altering certain words to suit its agenda. All right. Now, Noah Webster defines plagiarism as follows in his American Dictionary of the English Language. Plagiarism, the act of purloining another man's literary works or introducing passages from another man's writings and putting them off as one's own literary theft. That Truth Time Radio has committed plagiarism in this blog post, according to Webster's definition, is beyond doubt. I have just showed you 12 paragraphs from two copyrighted sources that Truth Time Radio literally copied and pasted into this blog on Webster and passed it off as their own work, no quotation marks, no source citation, no attribution, nothing, as it's their own work. It is passed off as its own, the copyrighted work of Jess McHugh in the Paris Review and C. Dawdell. Not only have they failed to cite their sources, they have literally copied and pasted large swaths of the blog from other sources and presented it as their own work. This is ironic given TTR's own insistence that proper attribution of their work is given when sharing their resources. The following is quoted from Truth Time Radio's legal disclaimer at the bottom of every blog post. Quote, you are welcome to share our content with others only, all bold or all caps, if proper attribution to Truth Time Radio and links in this website are included. See the image below. And, a, uh, and the final page of this document. So here's a screenshot of their legal disclaimer at the bottom of every one of their blog posts. Again, all rights reserved. You are welcome to share only if proper attribution of Tooth Time Radio and links are included. So it is extremely interesting that Truth Time Radio is, is, is uh, wanting proper attribution for their work, but then uh, seeing fit to take the work of others without giving proper attribution. So the fact by definition of Webster that Truth Time Radio has committed plagiarism in this article is beyond doubt. Twelve paragraphs are not their own work. Now, this gets more interesting when we track now with the history of all of this. Okay, Truth Time Radio has subsequently sought to cover this up. So I want to remind you of the top of this, where we see two different publication dates, the original publication date from April 22nd and a new publication date of April 20, as it stands right now on the Truth Time Radio website, as again, you can see right here. So what is going on? Why is there a discrepancy between the original publication date of April 22 versus where it stands right now? So let me just show you on a calendar here briefly. So they first publish on April 22. What I'm going to talk, and then their blog is in the public space for the last week of April and the entire first week of May until Saturday, May 7. And then something interesting happens, right? So this image is taken at six, basically 6.30 in the morning on Saturday, May 7. 
Image number one, Truth Time Radio's Noah Webster blog post was in the public space on Friday, April 22nd, when it was released until Friday, May 6th. On the morning of Saturday, May 7, it was no longer visible slash, slash listed on the Truth Time Radio website. The image at the left shows that Truth Time Radio, Radio's Webster blog post was not present on the website at 6.23 a.m. on Saturday, May 7. And you can see that right here. It is missing from the website. Now, at that same time, when I discovered that it was missing from the website, that same morning, Saturday, May 7th, I went to the Truth Time Radio Facebook page, and you can see right here where they had shared a link to the Webster blog. So, image number two. While not visible on the Truth Time Radio website, the Webster blog post was still accessible via an active link on Truth Time Radio's Facebook page at 6.30 a.m. on Saturday, May 7th. Uh, the link had the link had not been disabled in social media. So understand, it had fallen off their website, but it was still accessible here in social media. And again, that's at 6.30 on Saturday, May 7. So just be clear, you could not see it on their website, Saturday, May 7, but you could still access the article through the link on social media whether on True Time Radio's own page on social media or the pages of individuals' Facebook walls or in groups that this link had been shared. Image 3. Image 3 is taken at 6.25 a.m. on Saturday, May 7, and shows the version of the blog article that would appear on the email Q&A and blog post page of True Time Radio when one clicked at the link on True Time Radio's Facebook page. So if one clicked at this link on Facebook, at 6.30 in the morning on Saturday, May 7, it would load this version of the blog, okay? Now, while not visible on their website, the very same would generate when one clicked on True Time Radio's link that had been shared by individuals elsewhere on Facebook. Note the publication date on Image 3 of June 22nd, a date that hasn't happened yet, this date is a full two months in the future from the date of the original blog post on April 22nd. So you can see right here, June 22nd. So if one clicked on the link in social media on the morning of, of Saturday, May 7, it would still load the blog, forward dated, a forward dated version of the blog to June 22nd, a date that has not occurred. So what True Time Radio did is they forward dated the blog post to June 22nd, thereby hiding it from view on their website, image one, while at the same time not disabling the link in social media, image two, as to not draw attention to any potential problems with the article. Now, image four. The image is taken at 5.55 a.m. on Saturday, May 8, shows that the blog article that True Time Radio had removed from the email Q&A and blog posts, sorry, and blogs page, on the True Time Radio website was once again visible. This was after having been removed from the website for the duration of Saturday, May 7. So let me just go to the calendar quick and show you, all right? So this is originally published on April 22nd. It's in the public space this entire week for the last week of April for the first week of May. All of a sudden here on the 7th of May, it is no longer visible on their website. It is still, however, accessible through social media links that had been shared in, on Facebook, and it would generate to a, a version of the blog dated June 22nd, which is way over here, a day that hasn't happened yet. On the very next day, uh, Sunday, May 8, you could go, and it was once again visible here on the blog as this image demonstrates, okay? Image five, taken at 5.51 a.m. on Sunday, May 8, reveals that when Truth Time Radio relisted the Webster blog post on their website, they backdated it to April 20, two days prior to the date of its original posting on April 22nd. See published date at the top of this document. The difference in dating coupled with the forward dating observable on Saturday, May 7, see images two and three is clear evidence that True Time Radio altered the Webster article in an attempt to cover their tracks with respect to plagiarism in hopes that no one would recognize slash realize it. So 
They do not disable the blog. They do not do anything that would raise question in social media or anywhere the link had been shared that there might be a problem of, with this blog. When they forward dated to June 22nd, it falls off the website. They go in and try to cover their tracks, and then they backdate it to April 20 instead of April 22nd, the date of its original publication. Image 6, taken at 5.52 a.m. on Sunday, May 8, shows the two shows that two terse and insufficient source citations have been added to the Webster blog post. And you can see that right here. This information was not in the original rendition of this blog from April 22nd, but now all of a sudden it is there along with a very anemic and terse way of recognizing attribution. These citations were not present in the original blog post published on April 22nd. See the original date above. So regarding these source citations, please note that only the names of the authors and dates of publication are provided by Truth Time Radio. While they have gone back through the blog post and marked paragraphs uh, for which Jess McHugh was the source with a single asterisk, <clears throat> they do not provide the title of the article or the location of where the content uh, can be accessed online. Likewise, paragraphs for which C. Dawdell was the source have been marked with a double asterisk in the current version of the blog. Please consider the following timeline. Listen, folks, to only mark work with a single asterisk or a double asterisk, depending on the source, and still use no quotation marks is absolutely terse, anemic, and insufficient based upon the level of uh, plagiarism that has occurred here in the original rendition of the blog. And again, this is all being done so as to not raise attention to what has transpired here. So let's look at this timeline. For two weeks, April 2nd through May 6th, Truth Time Radio's blog post on Noah Webster was in the public space in a heavily plagiarized form with zero attribution. This form had been shared on Facebook, not only on Truth, not only by Truth Time Radio, but by their supporters as well, both on their personal pages and in group forums such as the King James Bible debate group. See images seven and eight on the next page. In at least one case, the uh, in at least one case in the King James Bible debate group, the voice of Truth Time Radio was explicitly tagged in a comment under a link to the blog post during the two weeks in question. So let's go look at seven and eight. So here's image seven. Image seven shows that the original plagiarized form of Truth Time Radio's blog post on Noah Webster was shared in the King James Bible debate group on Facebook on April 23, 2022. This is within the two-week time frame between April 22nd and May 6. It further suggests that Truth Time Radio emailed a copy of the plagiarized form of the blog article to people on their mailing list. Notice further that there were 26 comments on this post. So we could come over here, we could see <clears throat> this statement right here. First note the date, April 23. This is an excerpt from an email from Truth Time Radio. So Truth Time Radio sent out emails notifying people of their new blog post on Webster on April 22nd. I'll show you that here in a minute. This person is sharing this in the King James Bible debate group on April 23 and is noting the fact that they received it from Truth Time Radio via an email. Image 8. Taken at 8.23 on Thursday, May 12, 2022, is a photograph of one of the 26 comments made beneath the link to Truth Time Radio's Webster article in the King James Bible debate group. Note that it was posted uh, two weeks ago, right here, 2W, within the two-week time frame between April 22nd and May 6, that the original plagiarized blog was in circulation. Further note that the voice of Truth Time Radio is tagged in the post. Right here, we can see the voice of Truth Time Radio being tagged in a post. Now, this is dated April 12. If we go to the, and it was two weeks prior. So if we go to April, or I'm sorry, May 12, and we go two weeks prior, that puts us right in our time window for when the plagiarized version was shared, as we can demonstrate here again from these images. So let's go back up here and recap number one. 
So what number one is saying here is that for two weeks, the plagiarized form of the blog was in the public space. True Time Radio sent emails to people on their mailing list. Their followers shared this in social media. True Time Radio shared this in social media. Number two, on Saturday, May 7, the blog post was forward dated to June 22nd, thereby hiding it slash removing it from the email Q&A and, uh, and blogs page on the True Time Radio website, Image One. Meanwhile, the links on Facebook remain active, redirecting people to the original plagiarized version of the blog post, bearing a publication date of June 22nd, see images two and three. Doing so afforded Truth Time Radio the opportunity to address the plagiarism issue without alerting people in social media to a potential problem with its content. They have done this to not raise question and suspicion regarding their actions. On, Saturday, on Sunday, May 8th, the blog post was again visible on the True Time Radio website, Image 4, with a publication date of April 20, Image 5. The revised version of the blog post contained feeble source citations in an attempt to cover up the original extensive plagiarism, Image 6. That said, instances of plagiarism still exist in the revised blog post and can be observed beginning on the next page. Put another way, True Time Radio has failed to adequately cover all of its tracks. It was during the time that the blog post was forward dated to June 22nd that True Time Radio revised the article by adding the note regarding sources to the end of the blog post and adding the asterisk markings to the body of the text. Then once the changes had been made, True Time Radio backdated the posting to April 20 instead of the original publication date of April 22nd. Interested parties can expect and compare the revised blog post below with the original posting above. Once again, instances of plagiarism are still observable in the article below. So I will show you that here in a minute, but I first want to corroborate for you what I am talking about. So one of Truth Time Radio's uh, supporters or followers made a video where they are... Um, they made a video here on May 7, where they are interacting with the Webster blog. All right, now I'm going to only play the first minute and a half, and then I'm gonna skip this ahead to the end. Need a practical Christmas gift your dad will actually like? If you give me just 30 seconds, I will show you how thousands of people just like you Okay, I just wanted to make a quick video. I want to point out that the date and time this video is being made, this is made on May 7 at 8 o'clock in the morning. This is the same day on the calendar that the blog was discovered missing from the True Time Radio website and forward dated to June 22nd. Now watch what happens in this video. Yo, um, I should, I um, got this email on April 22nd, so it's been a couple of weeks. So note that the creator of this video explicitly says that he received an email from True Time Radio on April 22nd, and he is now making this video two weeks later. And I just now thought I'd do a video on it. This is a newsletter email from Truth Time Radio. I don't know how many of y'all watch Truth Time Radio or get the newsletter. But this blowed me away, and I wanted to share it. Um, I guess, yeah, I use the the Webster's 1828, but I use it with caution. And what first, why I first had my doubts about Noel Webster was um, he just he has a definition for planet that uh, is according to the heliocentric globe Earth view, and that's a big error right there so we know that he was he bought the car uh, the <clears throat> the satanic cosmology of the scientific revolution which was a direct so watch what happens the creator of this video is scrolling through the pdf you can see right here cookie policy what's going to happen is there's going to be a cookie policy right in the middle of the page the creator of the video is going to cook click on the link to accept the cookie policy and it's going to cause this PDF to regenerate. And watch what happens when 
the cookie policy is accepted. I to take on God's word, but when I, I had no idea that, uh, that he was this bad. He was a Calvinist and he... Right there. It regenerates to June, a date of June 22nd. On the day. So, this was in the public space since April 22nd. It is now that this video is being created on the Saturday of, uh, uh, on the day of Saturday, May 7 at 8 o'clock in the morning. It is no longer visible at this point on the True Time Radio website. The creator of this video clicks on that, accepts it, and right there on the screen in front of you, it regenerates to a forward date of June 22nd. You can see that I am not making this up. This is corroboratable. This is demonstrable and objective. What's going on here? All right. Now, I'm going to skip ahead if I can and show you the end of this where you can see that there are no source citations on this video. Right here, here is the... So when this thing regenerates to June 22nd, it regenerates to the original plagiarized form of the blog, and you can see right here at the bottom that there are no source citations. So we have clear evidence here of what's going on. Now, the revised version from April 20 still contains within it. So understand, Truth Time Radio is trying to cover its tracks. But when they try to cover their tracks, they don't catch all the plagiarism. They Remember, they plagiarized 12 paragraphs. The plagiarism is so extensive here that when, when they go back to try to cover their tracks, they don't catch or mark all the instances of plagiarism. Here we see this. This part right here in, in yellow while not a clear copy-paste, the content of this sentence is lifted from McHugh's article from the Paris Review and, sh and should have been marked with a single asterisk. Uh, see the discussion above for more details. So that's instance number one. Instance number two, this paragraph right here. While the paragraphs before and after this quote are marked with a single asterisk, thereby identifying McHugh as the attributed author, the source of this quotation is unclear from the text itself. It is once again a copy placed from McHugh that is not marked accordingly. So even in their track covering, they are not catching and marking everything. And this is the way it stands right now, even at this hour on May 27. By the time Webster, this, par this paragraph right here, this sentence is not marked with a single asterisk, is a clear copy paste from McHugh's article for the Paris Review and should have been marked accordingly. So here's a third instance of where they don't cover their tracks adequately. And then we can scroll down and see a fourth instance where an entire paragraph that is copy pasted from C. Dodell is not marked according to their asterisk notification system. There is no there is no double asterisk assigned to this paragraph. Truth Time Radio has failed to note their cover up that this in their cover up that this paragraph was copied and pasted from C. Dodell's 2006 piece, Correcting the Grammar of God, Noah Webster's 1833 Bible. See this paragraph in the original blog for further details. So even in the track covering, the track covering is inadequate. It is insufficient. So as it stands right now, there are four instances of copy-paste plagiarism that still exist within the True Time Radio blog on Noah Webster. All right. So look, folks, we can go down here and show you. There's a comment on the, I just showed you in the video that this was missing from the original rendition of the, of the blog. Given the extensive copy copying, pasting, and quotation manipulation that Truth Time Radio has engaged in in this blog post, these are extremely weak source citations. There are no journal, no titles, no journal sources, no links provided. Clarity is important here. Identifying text that one has literally copied and pasted into a blog post with a mere single or double asterisk is extremely sketchy. Moreover, it was done largely without the use of quotation marks around the lifted text. Now, obviously, there are two ways you could cite a source. Technically, any idea that you don't get that's not your own, that you get from somebody else, should be noted. But uh, you could do that. That's one way to do it. And another way is if you're literally quoting somebody, you're supposed to use quotation marks, which they don't use for text that they didn't write. 
Moreover, it was done largely without the use of quotation marks. Simply acknowledging a source without the use of quotation marks hides from view the fact that the text from a given paragraph was not True Time Radio's own work. Simply stated, the text noted above using True Time Radio citation methodology in their revised blog post was literally copied, pasted, and arranged by True Time Radio in its current order. The majority of this article is not Truth Time Radio's own work. This is documentably the facts. All right. And it's ironic to me that, see, this is my problem. True Time Radio has all this vitriol. They say they stand behind their work. They call things that I've done BS. They make fun of people. They make videos about Columbus Dave. They have all this vitriol, and then they go out into the public space, and they do this kind of stuff while they're mocking and ridiculing other people, and yet calling themselves Truth Time Radio. So, that Truth Time Radio has engaged in plagiarism as well as an intentional, subtle, yet unsuccessful effort to cover it, to cover it up is beyond dispute given the facts presented in this document. After two weeks, April 22 through May 6, of brazenly sharing, promote, uh, sh uh, sharing slash promoting their plagiarized blog entry on Noah Webster on Facebook, Truth Time Radio engaged in a cover-up by altering the blog without drawing public attention to the situation. During the two weeks in question, we silently documented the plagiarism and watched from afar to see how Truth Time Radio would handle the situation. It is unknown at this time what prompted True Time Radio to take the actions documented herein to cover their tracks. So I think we've proved sufficiently beyond doubt what is going on here. And look, folks, the body of Christ needs to be aware of this. That is why I am making this video. Okay. Yes, I have been publicly attacked by Truth Time Radio. My salvation has been questioned, so on and so forth. And, you know, that's that that's all on me. Uh, that, that's all I can deal with that on a personal level is what I'm intending to say. But I feel the body of Christ needs to be warned here about what is going on with this ministry. They're misrepresenting. They're gaslighting. They're not dealing with uh, information, honestly, like I proved in the last video on the history teacher barks back. Now we have a massive case of plagiarism and an attempt to cover the tracks hoping nobody is going to realize what is going on. So I wish I could make a more positive video, but it is what it is. So if I were a supporter and a fan of Truth Time Radio, I would be asking for explanation of why they've done this. Before you go, I would be remiss if I did not share the gospel. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ, if you've never come to a place where you've realized that you cannot save yourself, your own effort, performance, religious activity, law keeping, whatever it is, will not get the job done in before a, a righteous and holy God. You cannot earn your way, and you've never trusted and relied exclusively on Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross for your sin. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. The gospel is simple. Believe and trust the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is the only total complete payment for your sin, and God will give you eternal life as a free gift. Hey, everyone. It is Wednesday, June 1st, and I wanted to make a brief addendum. I originally recorded this video on May 27, and I have gone and checked this morning as of 4.12 a.m. this morning. The blog on Noah Webster remains the same. Uh, dated April 20 on the True Time Radio webpage. <clears throat> and if you come down here, you can see that we were last addressing issues related to the um, source citations. So what I want to talk about here briefly is um, I want to address what True Time Radio is going to do to try to excuse or explain away the plagiarism that we have clearly demonstrated in this video. First thing is they are probably going to try to say that these source citations here are sufficient. The ones that are added to the revised version and backdated to April 20, they're going to probably say, well, these are sufficient. You have the name of the author and the year. Um, they also may try to say something that they published a prior draft on accident on April the 22nd. 
and that the backdated version from 420 that we have on the screen right here with the citations was their original intent all along. Those are some things that I would expect uh, to be uh, to be heard coming from True Time Radio as a way of trying to excuse or explain away the initial state of the blog as it was in the public space for two weeks on April 22nd. Now, any of those uh, possible rationales that I just went through are not plausible explanations for a couple of reasons, all right? Number one, as it stands right now on June 1st, there are still four instances of copy-paste plagiarism in Truth Time Radio's article. So there are four, still four instances of undocumented, unattributed plagiarism in Truth Time, in Truth Time Radio's uh, blog. As they went to cover their tracks, they missed four cases like I just showed you here a moment ago in this video. I want to come over here to the Oxford University webpage, and this is... Um, a couple of things I want to point out here regarding plagiarism. Plagiarism of presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own with, with or without their consent by incorporating it into your own work without full acknowledgement. That's exactly what we've seen here. All published and unpublished material, whether in manuscript, printed, or electronic form, is covered by this definition. So there are still four instances, and I wanted to point out forms of plagiarism verbatim, word for word, quoted without clear acknowledgement. Quotations must always be identified as such by, their, by the use of either quotation marks or indentation, and with full referencing of the sources cited, it must always be apparent to the reader which parts of your own independent work, which parts are your own independent work, and where you have drawn on someone else's ideas and language. So there are reason number one why none of those excuses are going to work is number one, there are still four instances of copy paste plagiarism that are undocumented. In addition, as a sub point to that, we have seen how they have manipulated C. Doddell and Jess McHugh to suit their own purposes. So there's no way that Truth Time Radio didn't know what they were doing when they were making those choices. All right. Second. Uh, there are no quotation marks around the lifted text. This hides from this hides the fact, or hides from the reader the fact um, of what is actually happening and whose ideas are whose. And I've also pointed that out. So that is a that is a sort of a sub point or an additional problem. All right. And let's just say the source citations are completely insufficient. These citations are terse, weak, and anemic. They are insufficient. There are no titles of the article, no journal, uh, no titles of the journals where the information came from, and there are no links to where one can go and find this information. On the Oxford University webpage, there is a section here on inaccurate uh, citation. It is important to cite correctly according to the conventions of your discipline as well as listing your sources. You must, you must indicate using a footnote or an in-text reference where a quote passage comes from. Additionally, you should not include anything in your references or in your bibliography that you have not actually consulted. If you gain access to a primary source, so you, you have to, in, or, in order to avoid plagiarism, you have to accurately identify where things are coming. And you need to back up with references. Does every statement in my essay have to be backed up with references? You may feel that including the citation for every point that you make will interrupt the flow of your essay and make it look unoriginal. At least initially, this may sometimes be inevitable. However, by employing good citation practice from the start, you will learn to avoid errors such as close paraphrasing or inadequate reference, uh, quote, uh, reference quotation. All academic texts, every student essay, are multi-voiced, which means they are filled with references to other texts. Rather than attempting to synthesize these voices into one narrative account, which is exactly what True Time Radio has done, the way they've manipulated Jess McHugh and C. Doddell, stripped out things that they didn't need, like C. Doddell's source citations that he's using in MLA format, and then manipulating certain words to suit what they want to say, all right, rather than attempting to synthesize these voices into one narrative account, 
you should make it clear whose interpretation or argument you are employing at any one time, whose voice is speaking. Now, that has clearly not been done here in this, in this article here by Truth Time Radio. So there are still four instances of plagiarism. There are no quotation marks around the lifted text that hides from the reader what is actually happening, all right? The source citations are insufficient. This is insufficient source citation ought to just have the name of the article, name, excuse me, name of the author and the year is not sufficient. There are no titles uh, of the articles, no journal titles, and no links to where one can go and check this out. And I believe that is also covered here. Um, if you are substantially indebted to a particular argument in the formulation of your own, you should make this clear both in footnotes and in the body of your text. I showed you how that is not occurring either. According to the agreed conventions of the discipline, before going on to describe your own views, how your own views developed or diverge from those uh, from this influence. On the other hand, it is not necessary to give references for facts that are common knowledge within your discipline. Now, that is clearly not the case. Truth Time Radio could not have written this article without excessive borrowing and sourcing from other places, and these sources are insufficient. Now, on the matter of no links, um, you need to look at Truth Time Radio's own disclaimer here. All rights reserved, you are welcome to share our content with others if proper attribution to Truth Time Radio and links to this website are included. So Truth Time Radio has not included links to Jess McHugh and C. Dodell. They have failed to meet the, their own standard. They are demanding more from people who share their content than they are for the standard they are applying to this blog. They haven't even met their own standard by their own definition. So it is obvious what is going on here. This is the, the, the charge of plagiarism still stands for all the reasons that I have identified here in this addendum. One wonders, again, why they would not include links why they would hide all of this from view and why they would not readily provide to their readership the information necessary to check where they are getting this from. And again, we will address all of that in the next video. Thanks for your attention.